Hi guys, my name is Kale, and welcome to episode 8 of my captaining guide series. Remember to check out the playlist for the full guide to make sure you haven't missed anything, and please leave a like and subscribe to support my channel. Without further ado, today's episode is all about tournaments. How do you start? We'll discuss where to find them, how to register, how often to play in them, and the do's and don'ts of participating. To play in a tournament, the timeline goes like this. Registering, checking in, playing through groups, playing in bracket if you make one, and optional post-tourney tasks and review assessments. Here are some important terms to know. The check-in button is a big red button on Battlefy, the main site for tournament hosting, to confirm you are ready for the tournament. If you don't press this button, you will be dropped and unable to play. Seating is the process of assigning ranks or positions to the participants based on their expected performance and previous results. This is where the TOs, or tournament organizers, will be looking at your previous results and giving you a seed number. The higher the number in terms of placement, the better the expectation that you will make it far in the tournament. Groups are used to split up attendees into smaller groups to finish large events quickly. In these groups, all members play an equal number of matches. These are typically PA3, or play all three, and can be up to four rounds. This guarantees that you'll play up to 12 games. Do your best in all the games because even if you lose the best of three, taking the third game will help in more accurate seeding for brackets later. Not all tournaments guarantee making it to a bracket, so make sure you're aware of this when signing up. If you've lost in groups, you're not knocked out of the tourney yet. Wait to see if you made a bracket. Bracket is a tree diagram that represents the series of games played during a knockout tournament. Your performance in groups will determine what bracket you get placed into, where you will play against people who did equally well in their group. In Splatoon, the most popular format is single elimination, which means you're out of the tournament when you lose a set. Here, you will try to knock your opponent out of the tourney and go for the win. These games will be best of, which means you will be eliminated if you lose the majority of the set, usually sets of 3 and 5. To learn more about formats, I've linked the playlist from Battlefy explaining each of them more in depth. Buy is a status that allows a team to skip the round and advance directly to the next round. If you are given a buy, that means you don't play and simply wait for your opponent to finish the current round. Take this time to keep your hands warm and mentally reset if needed. Ladder is a format where players compete against each other in a set number of rounds, usually a minimum of 5 matches to make the leaderboard. Players move up and down in the rankings as they win or lose, and this format can go on indefinitely until the time runs out. This style is sometimes used when there is a large number of signups. You can take your time to mental reset between matches, and you don't need to arrive perfectly on time. As long as you complete your 5 matches within 5 hours, you're set. The do's and don'ts of tournaments are as follows. Do read the rules. You'll need to know what to do the moment a DC occurs and just what to expect in general. Do click the check-in button when your team is ready. Do use the match dispute feature and do drop before brackets are being seeded if you know you're not enough to continue after the group stage. And finally, do message in the chat to let your opponent know if you'd like to be scrim partners after the set. Don't click the check-in button before being 100% certain that everyone will be there in time. Get confirmation and signs of life from your team. It's annoying when teams check in to be seated just to drop out immediately. Don't DM the tournament TOs. Use the help desk. Don't keep playing when you've lost a player and aren't a full team. Just drop. Don't claim that your opponent should be banned from the tourney if you think they are too skilled for it. It's the TO's job to determine who can play, so if they've been seated in, they are allowed. Unless you have solid proof of someone smurfing, don't try to get a team DQ'd just because they made alpha bracket of low ink a year ago. Only recent tourney placements are relevant in determining exceptions or bans. There are a ton of tournaments out there, so here are the ones I recommend. 
I've put the server invite links to all of them in the description. For announcements on all the tournament listings, including Gimmick, Salmon Run, and Table Turf, I suggest following the Splatoon competitive feed to watch for all upcoming tournaments. You can either keep an eye on it through another server you're in, or join the server and follow it so that the posts will be in your own personal server. Low Inc. is the most revered and popular and is held once a month. Hundreds of teams enter to gauge their skill against other low-level teams, and many have the goal of winning or being banned from this tournament. Being banned means that you have surpassed low-level, and have earned your place in mid-level, which is Div 4 and above. It is a two-day tournament, but many teams drop before day two. Day one is groups, and determines what bracket you are placed in. Due to scheduling, sometimes it's not possible to play the second day, but that's okay. How well you do in groups is still a good way to see where you are in skill. From the Ink Up, or FTIU, is a bi-weekly tourney with a Div 7 skill cap that is held every Friday in the evening for those in North America. It is known for having some questionable map lists, but is fun to play especially if you enjoy playing at night. Little Squid League, or LSL, is monthly with a Div 7 skill cap and is held every Saturday morning or afternoon for those in NA. This time is friendly to those in Europe, so there are significantly more signups like in Low Inc. Mug Cup and Anarchy Russian are held once a month with a Div 7 skill cap where everyone makes a bracket. These are small tourneys, but great for extra practice and if you are in the mood to compete. Storm Surge is bi-weekly with a Div 5 skill cap, and Coral Clash Low Tide is like Low Inc, but smaller, with a Div cap of 5 and a bronze, silver, and gold bracket. Tournaments like these are good if you miss FTIU, LSL, or Low Inc. Minnow Cup is held once a month, with a Div 5 skill cap held in the daytime like LSL. This tournament focuses on one mode only, and is very tough because you have to make top cut for bracket. All for One is bi-weekly, with a Div 5 skill cap that starts in the evening like FTIU. Just like Minnow, this tourney focuses on one mode at a time. However, it is more forgiving as it has a silver and gold top cut. My personal favorites are FTIU, LSL, and Minnow because they are very well run and have more participants overall. Minnow challenges you on your best or worst modes, making it a great place to get matches to learn from against tough opponents. Once you've chosen what tournament you want to play in, navigate the server for the announcements, rules, map list, and help desk channels. These are the most important because you need to keep an eye on them for changes and will visit them frequently. Head to their Battlefy page and sign up with your team. To create a team on Battlefy, go to your account, my teams, and select create new team. Invite your teammates with a link and make sure everyone submits their splash tag in their name, as it is a requirement in most tournaments. To register, fill out the required fields and you're good to go. On tourney day, you'll have one hour before the start of the tourney to check in. Make sure you don't get 3-0'd by the check-in button. Once the check-in closes, you'll wait up to 10 minutes for seating. Take this opportunity to join the appropriate pool. Look over the rules again to make sure you're prepared for anything that happens, such as DCs or your opponent showing up late. Once your match is ready, determine who will host. I always offer right away because I'm directly next to the Wi-Fi and trust my connection. You can also ask them to host if you notice they have a larger roster and may have swaps. If there is a problem such as you reported scores wrong or your opponent didn't show up in time, click the match dispute button, and a TO will handle things. For any other issues regarding the matches, you can discuss them in the help desk channel, or you may find others with the same issue. Things to do after the tournament are optional, but I personally enjoy doing them as a way to wind down after a stressful event with the rest of the team, and I think it's important to document things right away before it's forgotten. Once you're out of the tourney, take pictures with your team and share your results on Twitter to get your names out there in the comp scene and potentially make it easier for other teams to find you for future scrims. Take note of your opponents in whatever way is most convenient for you, whether it's on a notepad, Discord text channel, or spreadsheet, documenting the comps and players of the teams you faced will be useful if you cross paths again. 
I find it important to note the names of the players in case they are on other teams and can be recognized again in the future. Reflect on the games and write down if anything in particular stood out, like strategies that worked or didn't work against them, and questions you would want to ask a coach about later. Watch replays on your own and or with the team to see what needs improvement. When you're unsure of a better play that could have been made, save the replay for a coach to analyze. I'll cover how to find the right coach for your team in the next video. For how frequently you should be playing in tourney, I have my friend Ty here to give his thoughts. And speaking of tourneys and scrims, I'd say 3-5 to five times a week for scrims, with VOD reviews once a week, is pretty healthy. And as for tournaments, I'd say probably once a week, or maybe two max. You don't really want to overcompete because you could be signing up for a lot of tourneys before actually learning from your previous tourney loss. So let's say there's a crucial mistake you made in last week's tourney that got you the place you did that you're not exactly happy with. Unless you're learning from that tourney, you don't want to compete the next one right away. Otherwise, y you can get this feeling of being stuck and you're constantly losing or maybe even performing worse than you did last tourney and then that could lead to like frustration and tilt. You want to make sure that you're learning from last tourney before you sign up for a lot of tourneys. It can also lead to scheduling issues, which is why I say keep tourney counts kind of low. You also don't want to undercompete as well because tourneys can lead you to connections. Whatever team you lost to, or even want to, can become like future scrim partners if you reach out to them. So there's definitely like a lot of connections and opportunity that can come through if you compete in tourneys. So you don't want to undercompete or overcompete. You want to have a good balance. The amount of scrims you do is entirely up to what your team can handle but definitely don't do more than two tournaments a week. It's also not bad to skip out on tournaments until your team is ready. Burnout happens and there's nothing wrong with taking a break from tourneys to focus on scrims and practice instead. Good luck in playing in tournaments, and remember to leave a like and subscribe if this video was helpful for you. I'll see you next time where I will talk about my experience with six different coaches so you can decide the right style you need for your team.